There was this anti-Guns N' Roses movement. They were too dangerous. I was like 26 years old at the time. I get called up into the de facto president of Geffen Records. He said, MTV is never going to play a video by Guns N' Roses. John Malone, who's a conservative Republican, owns half of the cable households that MTV is broadcast into. He basically told MTV if they showed any videos from this dangerous heroin junkie rock and roll band that he would take MTV off his cable networks. He said this company's not gonna spend another penny on Guns N' Roses. The record is over. By the time the band hit the stage, I estimate there were like six record companies there. I could see like the beginning of some gigantic bidding war. Out comes the most charismatic lead singer I have ever seen. And I knew that there was an animal magnetism with him that was just undeniable. It was like watching electricity spark. When I heard Slash play the solo, I was like, he's only 19. This is the Jimmy Page that you were destined to find. I knew from the first minute I saw him that he was gonna be one of the greatest guitar players in the history of music. I was like, oh, holy sh! This is the real deal. You know, I get this feeling about things and it's just like an instinct. I stayed for two songs, basically, and I didn't even finish the second song. I saw all I needed to see. I went back to the office the next day and I told David Geffen, I said, I just saw the biggest rock band in the world. They will be bigger than Led Zeppelin and the Rolling Stones combined. They will fill up stadiums. There was no way that I was gonna live and breathe without getting that band signed. When I played the finished, mastered, completed record, I thought 10 million copies. One of the few records in my career that I felt like the record captured exactly what we heard in our heads and wanted it to be. Well, 200,000 isn't even close. It's not gold, it's not platinum, it's basically not even halfway there. Radio was afraid to play him. MTV was afraid to play him. I get called up into the de facto president of Geffen Records, he says, I need you to sit down. We're gonna cut our losses now. Appetite for Destruction is over. This record is dead, it's done, you got to move on. I looked at him and I said, don't take it personally, but I have to go over your head. I cannot let this rest. Walked into David Geffen's office. He got off the phone, he said, what's going on? Why are you in my office without an appointment? And I said, the guy who you have running your company day to day is gonna destroy Guns N' Roses' career and he's gonna prevent this from being the biggest rock and roll band in the world. And so he looked at me and he said, what's the one thing I can do to make this right? I said to him, we made a great video for Welcome to the Jungle. If you can get this band on MTV, it will change history. About two hours later, he called me up into his office and then he looked at me and he goes, they're gonna play it. And then I was like super excited, yeah. And he goes, one time, and I'm like, one time, he goes, it's gonna be one time at four in the morning in New York, 1 a.m. in LA, Sunday night. Honestly, you ask me to do one thing, that's the best I could do. I woke up at like three or four in the afternoon and I had a bunch of missed calls from my office and I was thinking they're probably gonna fire me or something, I don't know. The guy who called the most or seemed to be the most urgently wanting to see me was the head of promotion. And he goes, MTV just added the video. And I'm like, what? Their switchboard blew up, it caught on fire. I was like, well, what do you mean? I mean, how, how can it blow up? 10,000 simultaneous calls came in. When the phone call comes in, it sends an electric spark, like the wires melted and it caught on fire, the fire department came. I go into Ed Rosenblatt's office, he's like, MTV has never had anything like this happen before. They think Guns N' Roses can build their channel. They're gonna play the shit out of them. The sales exploded, like in two weeks, we sold another 200,000 copies. It was literally like every kid that saw that video play that one time, 
went out and bought the record immediately. It was sold out everywhere. We quickly made a video for Sweet Child of Mine and we put that out and it exploded. Every radio station in America played it. The record just started selling in millions. The last time I really was keeping track of numbers, it was at like 35 to 40 million copies. It was like a near death experience where you die and you see the bright lights and then all of a sudden you're pulled back into your body. That's how close to death that record came. From the minute I saw them at the Troubadour all the way to the band breaking up, we captured the last great breath of hard rock music in the world. There hasn't been anyone since then. Somewhere there's got to be some desperate kids. All they can think of or want to do is make great rock music. If there's another one, the next wave, that are going to be the phoenix rising from the ashes, those kids got to be somewhere, you know? I hope that I can find it. I mean, I'm here. There's got to be some reason I'm here.